welcome to Timberlake Church Online. I'm Brittany Martin. I'm TJ Martin. And this is our daughter, Lydia. Oh, y'all thought we were gonna try to record this with her awake? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but we're excited to continue our new series, The New Normal. We know this holiday comes with a lot of different feelings. Happiness, sadness, loss, grief, excitement. We want you to know that we're with you as a church family, no matter what you're feeling today. And as we celebrate the motherly figures in our lives, we also want to remember those who are no longer around. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. As you prepare for service today, here are a few recommendations for how to get the best of your experience. First, turn off all other devices and shut down anything that would be a distraction. Second, try to cast to a big screen, maybe your big screen TV in your living room or your bedroom. Third, gather your family all in one location and get settled in. And fourth, sing loud and have fun worshiping. If you think you can sing as good as Cora Doss, now is your time. Nobody's gonna be around to stare or laugh at you. <laughs> so are you new to join us in person or online at Timberlake? If this is your first time with us, we'd love to give you a free gift. In the comments below, type in the word connect and we'll make sure to get in touch with you to give you that free gift. Timberlake has an awesome online community. In this Facebook post, click the link to join the group. We would love to have you join. Later in the service, there'll be a time for offering. You can give by text, you can give online, or you can do good old fashioned snail mail and mail a check. Whatever works best for you, works best for us. Your generosity leads our mission to reach, feed, and release people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We are pumped for more new events online this week. But we'll be announcing those on Facebook later tonight. Pastor Matt will be doing trivia again, and Pastor Brad will be doing another Ask Me Anything session. Make sure to look online tonight for all the ways to stay connected to the church this week. Thanks for joining us online. At this time, we're gonna to go to the countdown aka the couch. In the meantime, welcome each other in the comment section below. We'll be back soon. All right, guys, so I need a favor. Click the share button down below so your friends and family can join in. We all know someone that could benefit from the message this morning. Okay, if you had to pick one, scuba diving, bungee jumping, or skydiving, what would you do? I'm gonna have to go with skydiving because for one, I don't trust rubber bands with my life. So bungee jumping's out. And I went scuba diving once when I was like 12 in Swift Mountain Lake. And I'm pretty sure I only made it to like 10 feet deep and I felt like I was gonna die. So it was way too scary. It was eerie. Uh, was every, everything was green. Like I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. When I said scuba diving, I kind of meant like tropical, maybe you could see some fish. Yeah, I'm scared of the dark too. So <laughs> it just didn't work out. Um, yeah, maybe maybe in Cancun or something I'll go. So you're saying you want to go to Cancun? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. I would pick none of them. I'm a scaredy cat. Hashtag scaredy cat. I don't want to do them. I'm scared. 
I like my life the way it is. What would you pick and why? Comment below and let us know so we can get the conversation starting. Have you ever had the experience where you are worn out, you're tired, even exhausted, you get to the end of the day or end of a week and you say to yourself, why am I so tired? And you can't think of anything in particular that would make you so tired. Uh, you didn't run a marathon or even necessarily work a lot of hours on that day, but you are worn out. That happens to me from time to time. And what I've discovered, what I've learned is that there is a real thing that is spiritual fatigue that is emotional fatigue, that when we go through difficult experiences, it just takes it out of us. Back, everyone. I'm TJ Martin. I'm Brittany Martin, and our service today will include a time of music, time of prayer, scripture readings, and a great message from Pastor Brad and a special guest as we continue our series, The New Normal. So are you new to joining us in person or online at Timberlake? If this is your first time with us, we'd love to give you a free gift. In the comments below, type in the word connect, and we'll make sure to get in touch with you to give you that free gift. Okay, so there's a link on this Facebook post that will take you to an awesome online community for Timberlake. We would love to have you in the group. Just click the link that will take you directly to the group and join. Later in the service, there'll be a time for offering. You can give by text, you can give online, or you can do good old fashioned snail mail and mail in a check. Whatever works best for you, works best for us. And remember, your generosity leads our mission to reach, feed, and release people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We want to remind you about our daily devotional online, Rooted. It has great content from our pastors and our leaders and can be found online at our website at TimberlakeUMC.org. We would love to know who's worshiping in your home with you today. Comment below and let us know who's with you. Yeah, it could be your family maybe some of your neighbors, or even your 60 pound pit bull who likes to sit in your lap.
right, guys, so I need a favor. Click the share button down below so your friends and family can join in. We all know someone that could benefit from the message this morning. Okay, if you had to pick one, scuba diving, bungee jumping, or skydiving, what would you do? I'm gonna have to go with skydiving because for one, I don't trust rubber bands with my life. <laughs> so bungee jumping's out. And I went scuba diving once when I was like 12 in Smith Mountain Lake. And I'm pretty sure I only made it to like 10 feet deep and I felt like I was gonna die. So it was way too scary. It was eerie. Uh, it was every, everything was green. Like I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. When I said scuba diving, I kind of meant like tropical, maybe you could see some fish. Yeah, I'm scared of the dark too, so it just didn't work out. Um, yeah, maybe maybe in Cancun or something I'll go. So I you're would... saying you want to go to Cancun? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. I would pick none of them. I'm a scaredy cat, hashtag scaredy cat. I don't want to do them. I'm scared. I like my life the way it is. What would you pick and why? Comment below and let us know so we can get the conversation starting. What I want to encourage you today is to give yourself grace to acknowledge that we're going through a tough time right now and this is uh, something of a crisis for our world, for our country, for our communities, uh, that even if you're not sick, even if you're not working on the front lines, there is a spiritual and emotional toll that this takes on us when we read the news and we hear about people in trouble and we fear for ourselves and for our loved ones. There is a spiritual, emotional fatigue that sets in. So be sure to rest. Be sure to take care of yourself. Be sure to give yourself grace. Don't beat yourself up because you're tired or worn out or you need to lay down on the couch and rest. That is a good thing. Be sure to rest and be sure to exercise. Be sure to eat right. Take good care of yourself so that uh, you can take care of others around you too. everyone. Hope you enjoy the service. Bye. 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 Bye.
Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Brad, and this is Donna. Donna, welcome to Timberlake United Methodist Church. We are so glad to see you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you and to your mother and to your family. And we pray that uh, this service of worship would be a blessing to you. Thank you for joining us as we've gathered to worship the living God together. And we want to say a special word of welcome to our guests. Thanks for being our guest. We want to encourage you, if you're relatively new to Timberlake, uh, maybe you've never been to the building before, but you're joining us here. Thanks for joining us. Would you type the word connect in the comments below? And we would love to know that you're here. Type connect. Type the word connect in the comments below and uh, we will follow up with you. I promise we will never give you the hard sell, but we will invite you to be a part of our ministry. And there's a lot of things happening beyond Sunday morning. There's a devotional that we offer each day. Uh, there are life groups that are meeting. Uh, there's a, a Monday Ask Me Anything and a Wednesday night trivia night and all kinds of things happening in the life of our church, even though we are scattered around the community and we want you to be a part of it. Friends, I want you to know as one of your pastors, I'm meeting with our church council, our, our leadership team, every other week at this point, and we are determining the best way forward. We are talking about how to continue our mission and continue to do the work that God has given us to reach, feed, and release people. And we are making plans to come back to the building at some point. We do not have a date yet or a timeline, but as soon as we do, I promise we'll let you know. And uh, we look forward to that day when we can all have a grand reunion together in worship, in uh, in the space together with each other. And I look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, we're glad you're here. Welcome to worship.
Good morning, Timberlake Church. This is Pastor Matt, and this is the time in our service that we're able to gather our hearts together as one and pray. So let us pray. Father God, I say thank you so much for who you are. I say thank you for all the gifts that you've given us. Some of the greatest gifts that you have given us are the ladies that are in our lives. God, we say thank you for our mothers and our spiritual mothers who have raised us to be the people of God that we are. God, we ask that you would continue to show your tender mercies upon their life and that this would be a great year for them. Lord, we ask that your blessings unfold before them and that they would see the things that you have called them to do. Lord, we need more of a mother's heart in this world. And so God, I ask for a release upon the mothers of our church that they would be able to show and to share your heart with a world that desperately needs it. God, our world is in a place of brokenness a lot of people are in despair and do not have hope. And so God, I ask that you would use us as your people to bring that hope to them. God, I am reminded of the apostle Peter and his faith to put his feet upon the water when you called to him. God, as he kept his eyes upon you and not on the storming waters around, he was able to stay stand fast and firm on the water. And so God, I ask that you would release your spirit upon us and that you would allow us to know the power of what it is to keep our focus upon you. Lord, there are many things that are asking for us to not see you in these days, but God, we ask that you would show us the courage and the ability to maintain our focus upon you. God, we say thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, I say thank you for all the things that you're doing in this world. Lord, I say thank you for the people that you've placed to be able to help those who are in dire need. God, we pray for our first responders for our nursing staffs, for our doctors, God, and we ask that your hand be upon them, that you would keep them safe and that you would give them wisdom to be able to know how to deal with this disease. Lord, we pray against COVID-19 and we ask that your hand of mercy, that you are Jehovah Rapha, the God of healing, and that you would bring healing upon our earth. Lord, you say that when we humble ourselves as your people and pray that you will hear from heaven and heal our land. And so God, we ask for your healing upon our lives and upon our land, that you would give us a triumph over this wicked disease. God, we say thank you for all the mercies that we see and all the kindness that we see arise in moments like these. God, we ask that your hand would be upon us and that you would continue to press upon us your goodness and that we would see with our eyes the things that you are doing. God, we ask also for those who are far from you that they would be revealed to your goodness and grace in this time. Lord, there are many things in this time that we have been able to lay down that we need to continue to have laid down. And so God, I ask that we pick up the things that you have for us to pick up and that we continue to unburden ourselves with those things that have hindered us from seeing your face. God, I ask that there be a special blessing upon us in this time as the people of God, that we would rise up to the challenge that you have for us, that your Holy Spirit would be in us and that through the power of your resurrection, God, this season that we celebrate your resurrection, God, that we would see your dunamis power, your dynamite power happen in our lives and the lives of those in this world. God, I ask that there would be a great release of your people, a great release of your spirit upon the earth and that people would come to know you. God, I pray for revival and a season of revival to come upon the church. Lord, I ask that you would waken up those who are sleeping that you would make awake those who are in slumber. God, that you would bring us to fullness of life and an understanding of your goodness like we never have understood. God, I ask for a release of your spirit upon us, the people of God, that we be able to triumph over the work of Satan and that we would see your kingdom come and your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. God, I say thank you for this day in which we are able to celebrate so many great things and so many great things that you have done. So Lord, I ask that you continue to lead us in the places of prayer, continue to lead us in the places of reading your word, continue to lead us in the places of intimacy that bring us close to you. God, allow for this time to be a time of closeness. Allow this, time, this to be a time of surrender. Allow this to be a time where we fully give our lives over to you and that we see the world changed through a church who is fully alive. God, I say thank you for this time of prayer. We say thank you that we are able to bring our lives before you, to share in love for one another and our love for you. We give all glory to you, God. 
And it's in your precious name that I pray. And that name is Jesus. Amen. What's up, everybody? Here we are. We're doing Meals on Wheels today. And we're so excited about sharing hot food with our neighbors who have needs. So we're off to uh, make the deliveries and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, here we are at Wesley Apartments. Sponsored by Virginia United Methodist Housing Development Corporation. Okay, woo woo, United Methodist. And we're here to deliver meals to our neighbors with Meals on Wheels. And the kids are here and we're excited to be able to bless someone in the name of Jesus. Okay, I'm here with Marion, and she's one of our neighbors, and she's been a recipient of Meals on Wheels. Marion, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine, thank you. Wonderful. And tell us about how important Meals on Wheels is for you. Very, when I'm hungry in the morning, and I wake up, I get up. Well, I don't always get up when I wake up. I lay down, I look, look around, see if the sun's shining, if it's raining or whatever. And I don't eat breakfast until... And then I get up, I get up, do my, take, check my sugar, take my medicine, take my shot, and come in the kitchen, look around and see if there's anything I want to eat. It's not. I said, Meals on Wheels will be here in a minute. It'll be eating now. Yeah. Wonderful. Just on time, like this morning. I just finished eating cornflakes, but they didn't do anything. <laughs> it's right on time. Right on time. Wonderful. Well, bless you. Thank you for being a neighbor to us. Thank you. And we're glad to be able to meet you today. <laughs> you too. This week was my first experience with Meals on Wheels, but some of our Timberlake people have been doing this for years. So we're grateful to our Timberlake servants and volunteers, to Lauren Griffin, who is our coordinator right now, and to all of our Lynchburg brothers and sisters who have been serving for 45 years to bring a hot meal Monday through Friday to our neighbors who are in need. This ministry allows folks to have independence, to be able to stay in their homes, to have healthy nutrition, to have peace of mind for their family, to know that they are able to eat at least one good meal every day and to have social support. And I found myself in conversation with a number of the neighbors that we were serving, talking with them about the weather, about their grandchildren, about what was happening in their life, about this coronavirus, and about uh, how we can be friends and neighbors together. What a great ministry, friends. So proud of our church to feed people in the name of Jesus. Friends, our mission is to reach, feed, and release people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That is what we're all about at Timberlake. And I'm so proud that we can partner with Meals on Wheels to deliver food to our neighbors here in the community. We are all about feeding people, feeding stomachs, but also feeding souls. And I'll tell you, it is a blessing to me to be able to, to serve others, but also uh, so many of our neighbors here were so glad to see us and grateful to have someone to talk to just to check on them, uh, folks who live alone, folks who may not have a lot of family in the area or neighbors they can talk to. And so I wanna tell you one neat story. I spoke with a woman, I told her that I was from Timberlake Church and immediately she recognized our church and she said, oh, that's where my nieces go to get food. She said they come there once a month to the filling station and they come and get food. And so I'm so proud to be a part of a church where our reputation is feeding people in this community. Friends, with your contributions, we can continue to do that. Thank you for your financial gifts. Please give today. You can give through the website, you can give through text to give, or you can mail a check into the church. Thank you for your generosity that makes this ministry possible. God bless you.
Mom's smiles can brighten any moment. Mom's hugs put joy in all our days. Mom's love will stay with us forever and touch our lives in precious ways. The values you've taught, the care you've given, and the wonderful love you've shown have enriched my life in more ways than I can count. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, friends. The reading from the Bible for today is from Esther chapter 4, verse 14. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. May God add his blessing to the reading and the understanding and the doing of his holy word. Happy Mother's Day, friends. We hope this is a day of blessing for you and the people you love. My name is Pastor Brad, and this is my wife, Donna. Hi. We're so glad to be able to give you the message today and share the message of God's word with you. As we jump in, we want to acknowledge that uh, Mother's Day can be a hard day for some people, uh, for folks who've had a miscarriage or for folks who want to have children but can't conceive or for people whose mothers have died recently. Uh, for a lot of people, Mother's Day is, is a tough day. And so with that in mind, uh, we want to acknowledge that, that there's a more sentimental hallmark way to, to do this um, that comes across as kind of artificial. And then there's a, another way that's more authentic, we think. It's a more faithful way to honor all women, not just mothers. Um, not because of what women can do for us, but because they can be wonderful disciples of Jesus and do God's work in the world. And so we're, we're really going for that uh, second kind of message. Um, and it's not really about having the most kids or having the cutest kids or even about having kids at all. It's about being a disciple. Mm -hmm. So when we open the Bible, we notice there's a lot of different pictures of womanhood, a lot of good descriptions of being a woman in the Bible. And some of us think of a passage like Proverbs 31 about the the woman who gathers wool and flax for her husband and her children. Uh, and that's one really good image, but that's just one. And, and so we want to talk to you about another image of biblical womanhood today. We want to talk about Esther. Um, if you've never read the book of Esther, let us encourage you to read it this week. It's 10 chapters long and will only take you about 30 minutes or me 40 minutes because it takes me forever to read. Um, and I love the story. I did it with my life group uh, a couple years ago. Um, it's the only book in the Bible that doesn't mention God's name. But as you read it, you will see that God's fingerprints are all over it. God brings blessing, God protects his people, God raises up leaders for the right place and the right time. And one of the key verses in this story, probably the most popular verse in the book of Esther, is chapter four, verse 14. And the last part of that verse says, for such a time as this. For such a time as this, the idea is that God is moving. God is calling his people. He's raising up women and men for the ministry of God's kingdom in the exact right moment for such a time as this. So who was Esther? Esther was an ordinary young woman. And there's a few things we know about her from the story, not a lot. We know that she was an orphan. Her parents died and a relative of hers, a cousin, took her in as his own daughter. We know that Esther was brave and wise, which we will see as we unpack the story. We also know that she was beautiful, which is an important part of how the story begins. So the king at the time was named Xerxes, and King Xerxes wanted to take a new queen. The previous queen, Vashti, had disappointed him, so he went looking for another, he went looking for another queen. And so his servants brought many women for him to choose from. And uh, King Xerxes noticed Esther because of her beauty. So he chose her mm. to be his queen. But Esther had a secret. Do you know what it was? She's Jewish. Esther was Jewish. And she was a member of God's people called Israel from the tribe of Benjamin. And the reason this is important in the story is because her Jewish identity made her vulnerable. And it made her people vulnerable. During that time, as with other periods in human history, it was not acceptable to be Jewish. Mm -mm. 
Two other main characters in the story you need to know about are Mordecai and Haman. Mordecai was Esther's cousin, and he's the one who took care of her when her parents died. He was also Jewish, also part of the Israelite faith. Esther and Mordecai were, were very close. Uh, he was her advisor, her confidant. Uh, they Kind of like her dad. Kind of like, like her dad, right? A, a surrogate dad for mm -hmm. Esther. Haman, on the other hand, Haman is the villain in the story, right? He's terrible. He's ruthless. He's evil. He's sneaky. Mm. Haman is the king's right-hand man, and so he has a lot of power. He's second in command in the kingdom, assistant king or yeah. assistant to the king, maybe. <laughs> Definitely assistant to the king. <laughs> so the story paints a, a contrasting picture between Mordecai, who's God's man, and Haman, who is his own man. Mordecai is humble. Haman is arrogant. Mordecai wanted to serve his people. Haman wanted to serve himself. He wanted more power for himself. And because Haman was number two in the kingdom, he, he felt pretty good about himself. And when he went walking around town, people bowed down to him. Most people, anyway. But not Mordecai. So one day Haman is passing on the street and Mordecai refuses to bow down to Haman. His faith dictated that he would only bow down to God. So guess how Haman, this guy who's power hungry, feels about that. He is angry. He's incensed, very angry. So from that time, he devises a plot. If this Jew is not going to bow down and show him some respect, then he would destroy all the Jews in the kingdom. So he said to the king, your majesty, there's this group of people living among us in your kingdom. They do not respect you as king. They don't follow your laws. I think you should let me destroy them. And so the king agreed. And letters were sent out to the whole kingdom, to every governor, to annihilate all the Jews, all the Jews. young and old and men and women. And the word that we would give to this is genocide. Hmm. Haman was plotting to use his favor with the king to commit genocide against the whole race of people, against the whole wow. community of people. So this is terrible news. And there's one person, though, who has a better chance than anyone else to do something about it. And I wonder if you can guess who the potential hero might be. Esther. Esther. Let's look at the story um, through the eyes of Esther. This is the big idea number one for today. Esther was chosen. Remember why the king chose Esther? She was beautiful because he thought she was whew, good looking. Uh. <laughs> How does that make you feel? A little sexist? Yep. A little shallow? Yep. Mm, a little selfish? Can you relate? I wonder if you've ever had the experience of being chosen for something, of being desired by somebody, and it feels like they are just choosing you for very selfish reasons. And maybe it makes you feel small and devalued. Maybe it was your boss, a friend, even a family member who seems to want you around only because it made them feel good and need something from you. I hate when people choose me just because I'm hot. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I think we've all been there. Some I mean, us. obviously Brad does. Um, but here's what I want you to notice about the story. Just because the king selfishly wanted Esther for her beauty, that did not stop God from using Esther for such a bigger and more important thing than that. Do you see this? Humans may choose you for their own selfish reasons, but God can use you for his divine purposes. In the same situation, in the same place and time, humans may choose you for their own selfish reasons, but God can use you for his divine purposes. I think that that really resonates with me right now. Um, while we're in quarantine, I'm not working because I can't travel, I can't do my meeting planning. And um, right now I just feel a little bit like a servant uh, to uh, take care of the kids, to feed, wash dishes, clean up. Um, I'm constantly working and feeling like the only reason I'm there is because I am some something to somebody, but I know that God is working because when we hear the prayers in the evening, when we're doing dinner or at bedtime, I hear the children and what they're praying for. And I know that God is using me 
to raise children of faith. And that is amazing because that's what makes me get through the day because some days are just tough. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. Friends, remember, Esther was chosen, not only chosen by the king, but she was also chosen by God. So humans may choose you for their own selfish reasons, but God can use you for his divine purposes. Mm -hmm. Second big idea from the Esther story. <laughs> Esther was challenged. Esther was challenged. When Esther and her cousin Mordecai learned about this plot to destroy their people, they were devastated. And Mordecai mm -hmm. tore his clothes in grief and they felt hopeless because the king's mind was made up. Yeah. And so we read the story and we say, well, Esther was the queen. Couldn't she do something about it? Mm. And the answer is yes and no. Uh, yes, she was the king's wife. Yes, she lived in the king's palace. But that did not make her an equal partner in the relationship. The king was all powerful. So case in point, remember why Esther was chosen as the new queen. Uh, she was beautiful. But it's because the old queen had disappointed King Xerxes. And she was, uh, let's say, let go from her position. <laughs> let go. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Esther was understandably reluctant. I think any of us would have been. So Mordecai encouraged her and Mordecai challenged her. And this is what he said to her in chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Mordecai said, Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. Mm -mm. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So Mordecai was like, look here, cousin. Don't you realize this is your time? Mm -hmm. God has brought you into this position for such a time as this. And don't think that you're going to get out of this situation alive just because you live in the palace, right? You're one of us right. and we're all in danger and we need someone to step up. Yep. You're in the best position of all of us to do something. And notice again what Mordecai says at the beginning of verse 14. If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you're not willing to put yourself out there, God's going to use someone else. Mm -hmm. Deliverance for our people will come from some other way. In other words, God is going to do what God wants to do. No human is going to stop mm -hmm. God's ultimate will. Now, we know that our sin and our disobedience and the evil of this world seem to temporarily undermine what God intends to happen. But ultimately, God always gets what God wants. Always. God is going to save his people. So the question is, Esther, will you participate or not? It's a humbling thing when we realize that God doesn't need us. Yikes. God doesn't need our help. And yet, grace means the reality is even better. God doesn't need our help, but God wants our help. God wants our partnership to accomplish his own divine purposes in the world. What an extraordinary idea that the God of the universe has invited ordinary people like Esther, like me, like you, like you, to help him save his people. When God calls you and asks you to bless others in his name, how will you respond? We want to tell you about one of our people and how she offered a blessing to others in honor of her mother. Beth Francis is a Timberlake member. You may know Beth. She's part of the PB and J Life Group, and she and her husband, Tony, have two young adult children. Mm -hmm. And back in November of last year, Beth's mother, Anne, passed on. She died. And she had been living at Liberty Ridge for three years. And Beth talks about how wonderful the staff mm -hmm. at Liberty Ridge at the assisted living facility were to her mother, Anne. They were amazing caregivers and friends for her. Some of them even came to Anne's funeral mm -hmm. to celebrate her life. So Beth has been keeping in touch with them through social media and through texts. And with her mom's birthday coming up last month on April 28th, Beth wanted to do something special in honor of her mom mm -hmm. for these caregivers especially since they have such a stressful job right now with this quarantine with extra restrictions awesome. and yeah. the vulnerabilities related to this illness. So Beth made peppermint cookies. Her mom loved peppermints. Mm. She made the cookies for the staff at Liberty Ridge and she wrote thank you notes to each of them and she delivered the cookies and the notes and she had a chance to visit with some of them when she stopped by. 
And I love this story uh, that Beth tells so much because it's an amazing example of what the Bible means when it says, honor your mother, right? We're all called to honor our mothers, and that's what Mother's Day is about. And Mother's Day is such a great time to honor our mothers. But notice, even the mothers who have gone on to be with the Lord, Mm -hmm. there are ways that we can honor them as well. Notice also, friends, that if Beth had not taken the time to bless these caregivers, God could have found another way to bless them. But because Beth did it, she not only gave a blessing, she also received a blessing. Beth said, they told me they had just been thinking of my mom and her witty conversation. Mm -hmm. And she said, it felt really great to reconnect with them. And I thank God for them, knowing that he is at work even in the midst of the most difficult situations. Friends, remember, God doesn't need our help, but God wants our help. And it turns out that when we bless others, we ourselves are also blessed. So this brings us to our third big idea for the Esther story. Esther was blessed. She was faced with a horribly difficult choice. Let her people die and save herself or try to save her people and risk her own life. What would you have done? I'm not sure. Mm, That's hard. Since we live in a democratic republic, the idea of a king is kind of foreign to us. We want you to appreciate just how absolute the king's power was in this situation. Here it is in a sentence, Esther 4:11. All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law that they be put to death. That includes Esther. Includes Esther. If you go to the king and the king has not asked for you to come, that's the end of you. Now, Esther knew that was the law. Mm -hmm. She understood exactly what the consequences could be. She had not been invited to come and talk to the king. So for her to go and ask for mercy for her people was an indescribably huge risk. Not to mention, the king still didn't know that she was Jewish. She kept her identity a secret this whole time. So with Mordecai's encouragement and his challenge ringing in her ears, uh, this is what she says. She says this to Mordecai in chapter 4, verse 16. Gather together all the Jews and fast for me. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I I perish. perish. Notice, friends, that the strength for this huge task Mm -hmm. came when she declared a time of fasting and prayer. God speaks to his people when they take time to listen. Though when human power is not enough, God uses our time of prayer and fasting to provide supernatural power. So Esther held a banquet and she served the king fine food and fine wine and she asked him to spare her people. She took the risk. She put herself out there acting in faith. And you know what happened? The king relented. He changed his mind about destroying the Jewish people. He realized uh, what a bad idea that was. He he kicked Haman to the curb, the, the bad guy. And he issued a new edict in his kingdom saying that the Israelites were allowed to gather. They were allowed to assemble, which is code for worship, right? They could gather together for worship the way that God wanted them to. And so the Jewish people celebrated. Oh, they celebrated. In verse 17 of chapter 8, it says, In every province and in every city to which the edict of the king came, there was joy and gladness among the Jews with feasting and celebrating. Friends, this is the point. God will always bless our faithfulness. God will always bless our faithfulness. When you obey God, God will honor that. When you take the risk to believe, God will honor that. When you put yourself in harm's way for the sake of someone else, God will honor that. When you take the step of faith, God will honor that. Mm. Friends, we want to encourage you today to find some way to bless, to honor your mother, whether she is dead or alive, to find some way to honor and bless the women in your life. We want to encourage you, challenge you to take the step of faith, even if it means there's a risk. Follow Esther's example to know that we have supernatural power from the Holy Spirit to be able to uh, 
reach out and bless people in this world to take a risk to do something extraordinary for the sake of the kingdom of God and that God will bless you in doing it. That is the promise. That is the promise. God has chosen you. What will you do? God has chosen you, friends, for such a time as this. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Bye.
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today, friends. I hope this was a blessing to you. It certainly has been a blessing to us Absolutely. to be able to share God's word with you. Continue, keep your faith, continue to follow Jesus throughout the week, this week. Read your Bible, spend time in prayer, and uh, I look forward to the day when we can be back together again. For today, I want you to remember that our God is a mothering God because God gathers us together like children. God covers us and protects us, guards and guides us. And when the time is right, God pushes us out of the nest when it's time for us to fly, when it's time for us to step out in faith and do God's work in the world. Mm -hmm. Friends, remember, this is the God who loves you, who keeps you, who protects you now and always through the grace of Jesus Christ. May you have peace. In God's name, amen. Amen.